Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mac here, and I am excited because this is my favorite time of class when you folks take over. So I just launched the Picture Books module, but I wanted to talk a little bit about instructional design before I go through the module. Um, here's the copy that I worked on with the group, and you guys can see that as well because I've shared it in our channel. But what I did is I've really gone through... And you can see here in their guiding questions how they're trying to get at symbolism and the impact of classical picture books. Well, that's like the guiding questions. And then it was, so if that's really what they're trying to get at, do what I, did I find that in their objectives? And that's down in their criteria. And what I ended up doing, if you compare them, is I made the, um, well, A, they had a different assessment. Your performance task is your assessment. You don't, you want to, we're trying to get away from this idea that that assessment is separate from the learning. Try to embed your assessments and learning. At least that's what I try to do. So you'll notice when you look at the module, I took their performance um, activity and bumped that to the writing task. And I took their assessment activity and made that the performance activity. Because really that's where you're gonna be looking for the evidence. So, well, what that's when you go down to their evidence, their criteria, five sentences, we talked about that. I'm not. I'm not worried about measuring sentence length or paragraph length. I might do that in third and fourth grade, but not so much in college um, or even in high school, really. It's, it's, it's at that point, it becomes down to once you hit about fifth, sixth grade, it's I have an idea. This is how many sentences it takes me to reach that idea. Putting on number and word counts and papers like you need to do a four page paper your term paper needs to be 20 pages that's just stupid um your paper needs to be the exact number of words it needs to be to answer the question and not a single word more that's hard we sometimes take the stupid path because doing the hard path is well hard so i got rid of all of the word length additions um there when you look at the tasks and here we have different um, elements if you go now and look at the module. Oops, sorry, that's the actual HTML. Um, here are the readings. And I did kind of, they gave you four readings. I select them down to four, use some of them, but I really wanted to pick some practitioner pieces. When you're selecting readings for your class and for anybody when you're teaching, like this is part of instructional design, does it meet the audience's needs? And you folks are pre-teachers, and most of the articles you were selecting were research articles about semiotics, and these are awesome topics, and I do plan to use them, but they would be more for a graduate class in um, children's literature than rather a practitioner class learning how to do picture books in the classroom. So a good part of instructional design is selecting the right um, materials that will move your students to the learning goals. So let's remember what we did. We kind of started with our goal, those guiding questions. Then we thought about the criteria, okay, well, and focused in on symbolism. If you go down, you will see their criteria. Um, to accurately describe symbolism in picture books, you should be able to use evidence from the readings to analyze a picture book. Those are good, strong criteria that will measure what we're trying to get at. Then you try to see, do the tasks bring them there? And you'll start to see where the symbolism is in the read task, symbolism in the write task, symbolism in the participation task. So you can see how we scaffolded the um, understanding that we want our learners to take away through our tasks. Then we measure that in the criteria and evidence. What does this mean for you folks taking over the class? Well, when it's your week of the module, so this Wednesday to Wednesday, starting Thursday at, <coughs> at 1030, is um, picture book week. And so they're in charge of the module. So picture book group, I want to see four to five different daily challenges posted um to the class daily challenge channel first post you know have somebody put it on their website uh tweet it out or i'm sorry not tweet it out post it out and then you can share the link in our digital dumps channel i'm mean, not our digital jumps our daily challenge channel on slack and then you know you'll be checking out their stuff then provide the comments and the feedback to the learners as you see their work like you're the teachers run the classroom discussion, provide them better feedback than I did. I was supposed to model this in the poetry module, but I, you know, I'll be the first one to admit, I don't think I was as present as I should have been as a teacher. And part of that's the reflection process too. And I'm going through in the second week now and doing my feedback for all of your poetry posts, but I would have much rather have been more present during the class. Um, my travel schedule and work schedule just didn't line up as well. So picture book group, you folks are the teachers. I want to see you commenting each other's work. I want to, when when you um, 
when everybody finishes, you, you're going to divide up the posts and, you know, judge everybody using like the criteria and the evidence. You can even encourage them to write a reflective post. Um, but we'll talk about those assessment strategies as well. So for the other groups moving forward, I'll be going through each of your templates and doing this with you as well. But feel free to continue to edit your templates if there's anything in this learning about instructional design that you heard that you might want to go back in. Because here's what I'm noticing, and I think this is what happened, is this is an online class, I assign group work, and so you guys each divvied up the section. Hey, you do the readings, you do the assessment, you do the tasks. And then what happened was an incoherent lessons. Not so much with the picture book group, they went first. And they actually did a really good job. But in some of the other ones, I can see three different authors working on three different tasks, never bringing them back together. And honestly, this is how you write lessons as a teacher. Um, you go through and you work collaboratively as a group. So this is a critical lesson you're learning in this class that actually has very little to do with children's literature, but everything to do with teaching. How do I design a lesson in a collaborative and distributed environment across emails, across channels? That's how, you know, curriculum writing is done. We do, and yes, we do get together face to face. And usually the groups that do meet face to face throughout the weeks are the ones who do best on this task. Well, that's pretty much it for this update, and I will talk to you folks soon.